A Matissimo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the A Matissimo show. And boy, do I have a doozy for you this week. I'm very pleased to、uh, be taking a good, hard look at the. Eve and Eve. Yes, as I'm sure you're aware, based on that cover and based on even the name itself, this is another Yuri manga story. Now, it is a standalone manga, and it's a collection of six stories that take place at various times in the same. World. So this is、uh, this is this is a weird one. So we're gonna get we're gonna get right into story、uh, right away, and we'll just kind of go from there because I don't, I don't think there's much else for me to say. If you like Yuri and you want something a little more mature, then this is this is your guy. Yes, Yuri tends to be a little more subdued when it comes to the sexual content, whereas Yaoi is a little more willing to get into that nitty gritty sexual stuff, and Yuri is a little more fluffy for the most part. But this one.、Um, Yeah, it's rated M for a reason, and it it pleases me so. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get I'm gonna try to get this right. There's a there's a lot going on in the first page of this manga. It's actually very comedic almost. So I guess what's happened is it is a post-apocalyptic world that we are entering into for the very first chapter of this manga. Now what happened is a is a comet hit the Earth. It blinded everybody who saw it. And then a virus virus outbreak occurred. So basically, zombies, you know, started eating one another.、Um, the remnants of humanity turned to an AI program, which decided that,、uh, yeah, yeah, humans weren't worth saving. So,、uh, so nuclear fire was initiated by that AI device. And、uh, then aliens showed up. I'm, I swear to God, I'm not making this up. Aliens. Showed up.、Um, they were going to kind of take over Earth.、Uh, they saw that the cataclysms were go ongoing with like floods and earthquakes and that kind of stuff. So they they went on their merry way, and then、uh, yeah, the Earth was just kind of left in tatters after that. So that's kind of what、uh, what leaves us with just two girls. Two girls uh, survived. Uh, young ladies,、uh, probably in their late teens, I'm guessing, or maybe even early teens, but in their late teens. One is German, another the other I'm assuming is Japanese.、Uh, they can't really communicate with one another, but they're just trying to get by. They're trying to survive. And they kind of have existential crises, of course, because they are the only ones alive, and they they can't really communicate, and they're just trying to figure out what to do with themselves and how to survive. So, of course, our Japanese girl is thinking, what what do I do? Like we we're both girls, we can't you know repopulate. Like yes, we are in love with each other, and that's established pretty clearly. They have like these super messy tongue. <laughs> enacting、uh, makeout sessions, and they they clearly have sex every so often. They they kind of reflect on that, the fact that they have done that, and then eventually they do find a、uh, procreation capsule thing that allows two women to have babies. And they decide, cool, we're gonna have babies. And then at the very end of the chapter, they have like six or seven kids, and that's the end of the first. Chapter, so it really kind of throws you for a loop. The story,、um, it, it's very bizarre initially. You're like, why, why with all these apocalyptic events taking place? What's with this deal? Like, it seems a little overcompensating for something. I don't know, but that's kind of like initially your story, and then you get into like. Four other stories that seem separate initially because the Earth seems super fine and everything, but you quickly discover that it's actually before the apocalypse. All these various events that are taking place before the craziness does happen, and then the actual final story, the sixth story or epilogue, it perhaps is the one where we come back to the two leading ladies and we kind of figure out what's going on there.、Um, they haven't had kids yet, and they kind of find the newspaper that connects everything from the previous stories. So it might feel a little. Disjointed initially, but the stories range、uh, from a bunch of things. Like we have our first story, which is very、uh, post-apocalyptic, and then we have other stories that are a lot more simplified. Some of them, you have a story where it's just a bunch of like five or six girls in high school talking about who would be the tops and who would be the bottoms inside of your relationship, and then there's this one girl who is insistent that she would absolutely be a top, not a bottom, and the other girl convinces her otherwise by,、um, well, practical. Methods. Other stories include、uh, two girls that can only kind of get together whenever they're cheating on their significant other. Another story, which is one of my personal favorites, is one whenever you have this like shrine priestess girl kind of thing who is、uh, considered cursed inside the village, and she's very close with this tomboyish girl. And then the tomboyish girl leaves. She comes back when they're much older, and then the priestess girl it says, "Oh, I gotta marry somebody. Only two girls can marry because we're because we're cursed or whatever." And then we have kids that way and that kind of stuff.、Um, yeah. What other stories do we have? Right. And then the The other two stories we do have is this girl with this sex bot thing that she only uses for actual reference with her manga, and then there's a bit of an existential crisis inside that with the 
robot and the girl as well and can she even fall in love with the robot if is it even possible and the robot is actually developing motion it's a pretty cool story in that regard and then our kind of last to second last story is these uh, two women who want their love to be eternal so they sign up for this program that allows their brains to kind of go into satellites over top of the earth and kind of monitor everything and they only do that for 80 years because they realize that eternity or real love is only love because it's finite and life can only be life because it does end which is pretty get into some pretty deep stuff um, and that's when we kind of come to the epilogue and the two girls in the beginning find the newspaper talking about those two satellites that kind of were destroyed at one point or that project in general so there, there's a lot of stories here um, they range and you kind of got an idea based on what I said there as to what kind of stories we have here each and every one has Yuri ranging from sexually explicit to kind of fluffy which is nice you got a really nice variety of Yuri inside this which we'll get further into with development but for now after that kind of sporadic telling of the story that's in here we will get into the actual presentation of this one so unlike the last yuri anthology we took a look at where there's a whole bunch of different artists inside of it this one is actually created by one person the story and the art is all one person so it does run the risk of being repetitive with the different facial uses and that kind of stuff i do find a lot of artists are fairly limited with their ability to draw a whole range of females and especially in yuri relationships so it's not even just one female it's always two or potentially more but I have to say, and I'm happy to report that this one has a really nice range of females, a really nice range of characters, a nice range of ages, a nice range of scenarios that are all presented extremely well. So our first story, we have the German girl as well as Japanese girl, and they look very different, very cute. They're inside high school, and they have a lot of sexy scenes. We'll talk about those later. And then the other scenes, like with the two uh, adult women who kind of fooled around in high school on their boyfriends, so they can only really get off when they're cheating on each other or on their significant others. And they're both like fully grown women uh, in their 30s or almost their 30s and they have like this very mature kind of relationship occurring the five or six high school girls that are kind of determining who's top and who's bottom it's more of a cutesy kind of style the girls look like they're inside high school and they all have black hair and there's nothing like overly obscure about them other than kind of their facial structures and their hairstyles they're all different so they're pretty easy to tell apart the manga artist and the robot the robot actually looks like a robot with a kind of blank stare with her slight touches of emotion every so often and then the manga artist is more this like younger looking individual Victual who does the the manga thing the other story where we have the uh, shrine girl or the cursed girl inside the little village or whatever as well as the tomboy really like that kind of contrast there definitely one of my more favorite contrasts inside this story I love tomboy uh, characters uh, inside these kind of Yuri stories so she was presented extremely well and then the shrine maiden or whatever I, that's kind of how I think of her in my head is uh, she looks pretty good as well she looks like a you know shrine maiden that is kind of tortured that is oppressed and that doesn't really know how to handle herself because of the curse that her family has to deal with and she in turn has to deal with with this girl Yui I believe her name was that she is really into which is pretty good stuff then whenever we get into the more sci-fi stuff with the brains and the satellites and all that kind of stuff and they, they kind of like take on these uh, metaphysical forms of like these angelic beings when they're talking to each other but really they're just brains sitting inside satellites which is insane that story was very um uh, uh, it was I don't know a very impacting I guess it was it was something I have to say it was hitting on some pretty interesting themes inside that one and then we return to the the original concept with the two girls in the post-apocalyptic world uh so yeah the characters look really great the backgrounds are phenomenal um really great like you have a huge range of backgrounds you have the post-apocalyptic world you have that little village kind of area you have a high school you have just basic city kind of romping with the older ladies um you have this manga cause room like it's all it's all, it's all very different all the stories are very different and it's nice that they all take place in the same world we have this wide variety of kind of where you're going to be and what kind of characters you're dealing with so so far arcs really good now this one is rated mature and i do oh do i ever love talking about the actual sex scenes inside of this one and yeah there are a lot of them which is awesome you simply don't get enough of that inside Yuri manga. So to have actual full out lesbian sex inside a Yuri story is oh so very refreshing. Like it does not hold back. There's 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 fellatio, there's scissoring, there's just anything. Most of the things you can think of inside uh, inside Yuri, you are gonna get it inside this. Um, now the interesting thing is that even though it is the, it's called mature and they could have had actual nudity uh, at least at the upper half, they they don't do that inside this one. They don't show anything. There's like little shapes kind of but like it's not there which I feel like is kind of a missed opportunity if you're gonna go that far like that explicit just just show it I'm not sure why they didn't but other than that the scenes are very hot I have to say that whenever it does get into the really good Yuri stuff you are gonna be 
I don't know, maybe just me or most, I, I feel like most people will be fairly um, into it, if you know what I mean. It's pretty good stuff. I was reading it next to Kitty last night. And I'm just like, well, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all hot and bothered from this. So it was, it was really good. I really, especially the tomboy and the uh, priestess curse girl. Uh, that was really hot seeing. She had Shima Pan on, which was fantastic. So yeah, if you want actual like Yuri sex, you are going to get it. Not inside every single one. I think uh, out of all of them, maybe three have actual like Yuri sex. Uh, the six stories, the, which is nice. I like to see restraint as well. Like I like to see just various levels of Yuri, various levels of love inside these uh, lesbian romances that we are bearing witness to, which is awesome. But when it does get sexy, it is super sexy and is really well done. And I have to say, I appreciate that kind of level of explicitness that you simply just don't get a lot of outside of actual just straight up hentai. So this is good stuff. If you want to see some actual sex, you're going to see it inside Eve and Eve. And that's awesome because there's an actual story, actual character development involved with it as well, which brings us nicely to our second last category of the review, which is development. So when I read the back and I saw that there's going to be like six stories in this collection, I was like, ah, oh, no, I'm not going to get uh, development. Ah, I'm not going to get a whole lot of it. And of course you're not really especially whenever they're you know single chapters you only get to know these characters very quickly and then you're kind of done with them but i have to say these stories left an impact i think the storytelling is really well done it kind of lays the foundation for the characters it does these past sequences that you really quickly get to know these characters and kind of see where they're coming from the art helps this a lot as well the way the characters look tells a story all on its own the way they dress even what kind of underwear they're wearing you can really get an idea as to what kind of personality you're dealing with here which kind of lends itself to that character development piece whenever you don't have so many pages to work with the actual scenarios themselves help with the character development the post-apocalyptic and the characters kind of how they're handling that kind of scenario or the priestess and the tomboy or the older women who are cheating on people like you really get a handle on what kind of personalities you're dealing with and there's just little minor nuances that are occurring throughout the story that kind of connect with the overarching narrative that help develop things really nicely so you feel like this is this is almost a tragic kind of story because you know that the world ends so even this happiness that these individuals find it, it just it, you know it ends and then you're just kind of left with these two girls so it's, it's a little dark this one's a little bit dark it's a little upsetting to read i would say but at the same time you are happy that these individuals do find some level of happiness before the end of times that do at some point occur maybe not inside some of their lifetimes sometimes inside their lifetimes so uh, there's that the last thing i will talk about with development because that's there's not a whole lot to talk about beyond the actual good use of the time that is spent within these pages and the various techniques that are used to develop the characters is that um Yuri pregnancy now this is not usually something I'm I'm super into I'm okay with it if it's done relatively well and for the most part I'm okay with how it was done inside this one um the post-apocalyptic uh, scenario with Eve and Eve I, I like that concept a lot um you know it's very convenient that there's this machine that is still operating that they find that enables them to start repopulating the earth um, like Adam and Eve type deal scenario or whatever um, you know you can suspend your disbelief a little bit for that scenario but nonetheless you know they both get pregnant and they start repopulating there you go you got some uh, you got some babies and some kids and you, know, you could potentially I guess rebuild the earth I don't know it's a little weird but eh, it's cool uh, as well as the priestess and the tomboy story the whole deal is that the priestess uh, family is cursed because uh, they I forget what it was they were like offered a man or something and then they fell for actually a woman thinking that it was a man and then they have sex and everything and then they, they're cursed or whatever and they're like forced to have I don't know the anger a goddess or something and I don't know I can't remember but they they end up basically having to always take a woman as a wife and then have a baby with them so the the priestess and the um, the tomboy girl Yui and I can't remember the other girl thing they end up having a kid together and all that kind of stuff which is I don't know I thought it was pretty sweet I like the development of that storyline a lot you could really feel a connection between those two girls and kind of the the anguish that the priestess was going through and all that kind of stuff so I don't know if you can tell but this uh, this entirety of the manga actually left an impression on me and I think that's really impressive considering it is uh, technically an anthology but at least it all takes place in the same world uh, just in various timelines throughout the actual uh, world itself which is uh well, it's cool it's cool i uh, yeah well uh, before i say more let's just get into final thoughts so my final thoughts on Eve and Eve are that, um, well, if you like Yuri, it's, it's kind of a no-brainer. You should absolutely purchase it. You won't regret it because you're going to get some nice actual Yuri uh, sexual activity, which is cool. You're going to get a whole bunch of different stories that, again, take place in the same world. And you get all these different scenarios that I'm sure one or two, or hopefully most of them, like for me, you'll actually really enjoy and find some pleasure and some level of uh, satisfaction, as well as the, just the varying degrees of seriousness with the stories uh, is great. It's nice and refreshing. It kind of takes you on a, a nice ride 
ride throughout the manga so that it doesn't become too stale or too predictable too easily which I like a lot so this was uh, this exceeded my expectations I expect this one to be that good but I, I have to say it left a major impression on me and I'm very excited to uh, yeah to, to put up this review so more people know about Eve and Eve and uh, check it out especially or well, uh, mostly if you like Yuri in any capacity then this this is one that you should have inside your collection because it's pretty important it's definitely very different very fresh very new and uh, I'm impressed with how uh, it presented itself and the Yuri kind of side of things and yeah it was good so that's pretty much it so I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helped you make a decision regarding this uh, little manga called Eve and Eve um, if you like the video please feel free to like it so the the video can circulate better on side YouTube um, as well as leave some comments down below and I can interact with you guys and let you know uh, kind of what or converse with you and kind of communicate and see you know have a conversation <laughs> as it were and then of course there's always patreon if you want to support the channel and that way as some of you or most of you know the channel is no longer capable of being monetized because youtube considers uh considers my stuff not not good for for the community so well, whatever yeah that's that's youtube man that's that's the breaks these days so anyways uh, i hope you enjoyed the video and i will see you on the next episode of the a matissimo show take it easy everyone i hope you're doing well and yeah bye bye